Well, I'm gonna start. Yeah, well, he doesn't. He's trying to. He's trying to pull people off the street. Well, why, yeah. why don't we? Uh, why don't I start? <laughs> and everybody. Hi guys. Um, good morning. I'm Mike Davis and my daughter Kristen. Hello. Uh, good morning. morning. Tex-Mex sales and. and a lot of you have been here before in the past. We've been doing this for like three years now, I think, yeah. in a row. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming out to Onion Fest. And um, uh, again, I'd like to speak to you guys just about what we do. You know, we do onions and the farming from the farming end all the way to the process and here across the street. And that's uh, that's what we've been doing. My dad, I'm a, on my mom's side, I'm fourth generation. With my dad, I'm third generation agriculture. And my mom's side for my grandfather started in the 40s he was a farmer and uh, he started and so that's how all this came about um, I have a son that's 23 and he'll be graduating school and hopefully joining us but we have my daughter my 15 year old is her birthday party today so I have strict orders I get to speak and I get to come home <laughs> so he had he would he would have loved to come because he's gonna come into the business uh, next next year but uh he's helping we're setting up and you know getting everything ready for the party with a couple of her friends and of course my wife's family and my family so it's turning out to be a, a little bar bigger barbecue it's a pretty good size barbecue <laughs> so we have a lot of food um don't, a couple things that i guess we should say that's a little different from the years past where my speech and my my topics water in South Texas. I don't know if you guys know, but we have a real critical water situation in the valley right now for agriculture. And I'm leaving on April 15th to go to Washington, D.C. to see if I can even see any of our senators or House of Representatives, but there's a big group of us going there um, to try to plead our case because we need, we need our water. And here in a year, if it doesn't rain, you won't even need to hear from me. You won't be able to wash your car or, or water your lawn. That's how bad it is, and no one knows it. And the only way it's gonna get out there is, when, everyone will take notice when you can't wash your car or log, mow your, your, or water your lawn. That's when everyone will take notice and our senators and representatives will because they don't really, we're a small section, the farmer. They don't wanna, I'll say, excuse they don't wanna upset anybody except the, except the norm of trying to put pressure on Mexico to give us our water. But if it's everybody, and you can't, somebody can't water their lawn, someone can't wash their car, we barely have enough water to bathe and have drinking water, then then there'll be some. Uh, I think they'll take notice. But until then, I hope we can do some good here next next month. Um, I'd be I'd be very surprised if I even. I, I, I'm afraid I'm gonna. I've been there before for other stuff, and it's like I, I meet every staffer, but I never meet the congressman. Never. I've been there two times for National Onion Association. I've never met our congressman once. Not once. Did meet the Secretary of Ag, it was Sonny Purdue. Very nice gentleman. I was up there and, I, and Sonny was really helpful. But um, hopefully it's a good trip here in April. We're on the 15th and I'll be there for two days. Good luck. So, yeah, thank you. For the area, we need it. The farmers need it. Um, we're, we're, I, the way it looks like, you're going to have to basically do a third of what you did or you have to have enough acres of what you have to have enough water to cover what you're doing because it's taking two or three acres to grow one acre of produce now because they've given us one allocation that gives us only so much water per acre and you can't grow citrus you can't grow an onion you can't grow cabbage greens everything else that's grown here in the valley you just adjust that so it's a serious problem Hopefully we get it done. Um, onions have been great. We had a pretty, a really good planting season. Onions came up really good. Water, um, we've been watering them. We've got some timely rains. Last Friday we got an inch and a half to two inches of rain. Um, like I was telling them earlier, it kind of screwed up about 10 or 15 percent of our crop, but helped the rest of it, right? So we're a little behind harvesting. Everything's wet. Um, we're right on there. We have no excess supply right now. I mean, we're waiting to get in. So Monday we'll be harvesting them all into the facility. And looks like we got two weeks of good weather according to the weather station. So we should be really, the onion harvest seed is really going to kick off here within the next couple of weeks in the valley. So where do you get your water from? The Rio Grande. So it's coming all the way from 
you know, from Colorado when it comes through. And, and I'm not a 100% expert on it because I, I do know some of it, but not 100. And I don't want to say what's right or wrong, but I guess Mexico pumps out of the river and fills reservoirs. And they're, by law, they have to give back so much water from the reservoirs. And they haven't been doing it for years. So they have to kick back so much water because it's not only affecting us. It affects us here in the valley, but it also affects Reynosa and everybody on that side. From Falcon Dam back down this way, there's a problem. And so that's where we're at with the water situation. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we can put some pressure. Be real simple. All you have to do is tell them we're not going to cross any of your trucks from Mexico. We're not going to bring over car parts. We're not going to bring over anything. And it probably the situation would get resolved within a few days. But I don't think our government has the stomach to do it. And but it would get done. I promise you, because the, you're not. There's hundreds of millions of billions of dollars of car parts that they wouldn't. Want. Can you imagine? You can't cross it. We're not going to let you cross. Fix the water situation. We'll let you cross your car parts. And your other stuff, it would, it would work, but I don't think we have the politicians to do, no one wants to rock the boat, and that's why I, I said say we're going to Washington to try to see if we can put some pressure on them to get it done. We'll see what happens, I hope. Um, that's what we're facing for the future, because if it doesn't rain or we get a tropical storm or a hurricane or we fill up the dam, it's gonna be, like I said, there'll be problems in the whole, the whole area. And I mean, just us for, you know, the, the first, people that get are going to be the cities for, you know, for bathrooms and water and, you know, just regular, regular stuff. And then, um, but if you're going to cut off the farmer, in my opinion, you should be cutting off the, the car washes and you should be cut off people's water at home. Because yep. if we can't feed you, you know, that's, that's a problem too. You know, it's, this area has, I don't know the exact number, but it's got to be in the hundreds or maybe even billions of dollars worth of produce that comes out of the valley between citrus and all the other all the other veg, plus plus corn, grain, cotton is all produced here with irrigated things. Also, and they, you know, that's how they. Some farmers make their living on that. And right now, if some districts don't have water, and some districts do, and you have one irrigation, which means that's all. You get to irrigate your crop one time. Pretty hard to make a crop on one irrigation. So. Um, We've had, but but a great year. Um, the onions look great. The onions are made good size. They're they're coming along. We've been pushed off a week now because of the rain. Boy, like I said, it was uh, it's stressful because this is where we, you know, you don't want your onions to go bad. And luckily, we have two weeks of good weather, so we should be able to harvest everything very quickly um, within the next couple of weeks. But uh, we needed the water no matter what. So. That was a great, that was a great one. We got a good rain, I don't know, up, up north about two, an inch and a half, two inches. It's so how much it rained on us on Friday. So, uh, customer, step in here. These are some onions, these are, I pulled these onions from the field yesterday, cleaned them up a little bit. They were very dirty because of their, but these are Texas whites. And I had them in the back of my pickup and I had the, the display. I was like, I'm bringing the Texas onions. Those are whites. So. Is that different than the thing? Sure, uh -huh. whites are, you know, they're more. Yeah, the they're 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 hard for me. They they they're stronger, so they're, you know more for cooking. Okay. Um, the taste of it, you can like taste. Sharper, yeah, sharper, sharper taste. taste. Yeah, the yellows are sweeter. The reds are sharp also too. So we have all three colors right now. We've harvested about. Uh, we've been harvesting since about the twentieth, twenty fifth of February, with a few fields, and we've been going along until that rain. And uh, yeah, we're busy. We're in our we're in our busy part of the season. We'll go real hot. We'll go really hard here till probably about the fifteenth of May, and then we'll finish here in Texas. And we keep processing onions from other areas, Mexico, and different parts. But the Texas season will finish around the fifteenth to the end of May. When are they planted? Anywhere from about the very end of September through probably November fifteenth. And so the longer you, the later you plant it, the later it comes off. And there's different varieties. You know, some varieties do better early and some do better late. And so we have, over the years, you learn which varieties you want to put in. And, uh, but the quality, quality looks really good. We have really good, clean onions. They're, 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 they're healthy and it looks like they're going to make really, uh, make a lot of, uh, we have good tonnage, it looks like, and the quality looks good. What do you do between May and September? 
just onions year round. So I do onions. We go here from here to New Mexico and then to Washington State, and then we come back here. Yep. So yeah, we do onions year. I do onions year round. My daughter is like I say, come into it, and uh, eventually at some point they'll have to take over. But I, I kind of do most of that for for right now. And she's food safety. Human relations, payroll. She does everything. So she does. She does uh, real important stuff too. And my son, hopefully, when he comes in, he can uh, uh, do the field also, the farming. And her also. I told her, you need to learn how to farm. It's not not that hard. <laughs> you know, but you got to learn it. You know, you learn it. You might as well. Then you and understand she, it better. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't. You know. So we do. We do it all from the farming to the packing to the selling. So. Chipping, Chipping, yeah. Take put it on trucks. Process. We loaded 20 trucks yesterday. And where does this all go? All over the United States. Yes, yeah, so we loaded 20 semis yesterday, I think. Wow. And where is this? Where is this loading? Where is your right across the right? Right across Next the street. to City Hall. Yeah, right near City Hall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. So they go. They go to re we go to mostly retailers across the country. That one ten fifteen. So, and with Easter coming, it's been very busy. I mean. We had a real, real last three or four days, a lot of shipments, and uh, we'll ship Monday, Tuesday, and then I think it'll slow down for Easter. But we have to get, you have to get them in the stores next week. You gotta get them to the distribution centers next week so they can get them out to the stores. And that's, we've been processing, you know, we start at eight o'clock in the morning or nine, and uh, are they, they, get, they get done early then? Yeah, really early. So it's earlier, yeah, earlier. Yeah, for early, it's like eight or nine, right? For us at night. Sometimes we would go till 10, 11, 12 o'clock. You know, you have to get the trucks out. And so we would work till midnight. And that's a lot of the times we work, you know, 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. So, yeah. So are you guys in the ownership of the farm or are you the processing? No, we're the owners. We're the owners. Okay. Yep, because you got farms in New Mexico and Washington. Correct. Well, again, we're in, in those areas. No, I don't own the farms. No, no, no it's too much. Can you imagine trying to farm all those areas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do in those areas? Uh, we process and sell them. Okay. Mm, we bring them down here to like repack if necessary, and then. Yeah, we bring some of the them. stuff we bring down over here, and we've been processing down here, value added stuff, and, and it goes out here or, or directly from the, the sheds in, in New Mexico and Washington. So, value add for well, you put in like the bags you guys are picking up, three pound bags, you know, that's what oh. the, that's, to, okay. to, that's value added, right? You're packaging it and um, doing okay. stuff that's, to me, that's value added. When I worked for uh, Holden Wallace back in the, it's a 94, or basically 95 to 01, that first year, the second year, I was uh, the shipping and, shipping, shipping and receiving supervisor, right? Given a chance, I would help out the uh, guys load the trucks uh -huh. with all flatbeds mainly or dry vans but then it was all, uh, all floor load yes because the pallets is just extra weight and uh, it was new york and or canada mainly the, uh, the destinations usually the canadian truck drivers would prefer about a thousand sacks these yeah. sacks weighs about 55 the jumbo in colossal weighs about 55 pounds i'm thinking it's been almost 10 years now since anybody loads anything on the floor anymore. No one loaded, it costs more money. Back then they used to think they were saving money on the pallet, right? But can you imagine now that it's hard to get people to even load, so. But we got, you know, 10, 15, 20, when I, like you said, 94, that's when I started. I graduated college in 94, and everything was still loaded on the floor. We'd have the shed, we'd take it over there, and they'd stack it on the floor and fill it up and put 900,000 bags on the truck and send it down the line, and then yep. they unload it on the other end. And now it's 100% pallets. You know, you load it on with forklifts and take it off. You just ask the truck driver, you want it light in the front, or what do you want light? How do you want your weight distributed? And figure it out and load it. Yep, that's the way it was back then. And it's it's not anymore, thank God. Because <laughs> no one wants to do that job, that work anymore. It's it's really hard. It's hard to find people to stack, you know, load and unload trucks. Yeah, usually for that, I would get the best guys whenever it came to reds, whites, yellows, 16 threes, 16 bag, uh, the 16, the three pound bags, how many is it, 16, six, I, I just don't want by 16 threes, mm -hmm. so, yeah. the three pounders, and then the two, uh, what was it, the other, the 40, yeah, two pounders, and then you had the 25 pound bags, the 10 pound bags, so you had to know what guy was 
knew how to load because it does get kind of confusing. Oh no, there's a lot of different. I we do. How many SKUs do we have? Hundreds, hundreds, hundreds. I mean, I again, it just depends on the customer. You have a customer and you ask for a certain item, and so you make up a new item in your sit in your computer, right? Now you have a new item, whether it's a 12, 3, 16, 3, and so I must have 500 SKUs of different onions. Now, but but I mean, on a truck, you could load 10 SKUs, 10 different reds, whites, yellows, three pounders, five pounders, ten pounders. We do any, you know, and that's kind of how we room and this we would do that you know I, you can come to me and i can get you everything you don't have to go to different places so thank you you're welcome any other questions for me guys? Huh? Uh, yes so what we bring in we usually uh, buy some a little bit of heat so we're between 80 and 90 degrees but it's we're looking to always draw humidity so when we bring it in, we're pushing air through the onions and, and trying to draw humidity as low as we can. If it's bad outside and very humid at night, it'll shut itself down and recirculate air. And then in the day when the humidity drops, it'll start bringing in air from the outside. So we, it's kind of changed. It used to be just we bring air and try to heat it and get it really hot and yeah. dry them down. But it's technology's kind of changed, which for the better, because you actually don't do real good when you have humidity at night and you bring in a lot of humid air and you're getting the onion kind of damp again. So, um, yeah, the new technology is kind of cool. We don't let them stay there very long. So <laughs> we harvest them, get them to the shed, dry them down, and we ship them out. I mean, we don't, we, we're, we're just constantly bringing in more from the field all the time. So, I mean, we could store them for, for probably a month, but I, they won't pay you to store them, right? It costs money to, to keep them stored at, at, at that temperature. And so I just don't understand how the grocery store can have all year long if harvest is this time. Because they, well, they don't have Texas 1015s all year. They have it right now. But once we finish, then like, so here's an area. Like I said, we go from here and we have product in Mexico and then we transition to New Mexico and then we transition to Washington. So, so they, have they, they have different growing seasons. Okay. There's growing, there's onions in, in New York, in Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, grow onions. So there's still, there's some, uh, there's, there's some, and they're all different, they're different. They're planning right now to harvest August. We're the first Texas, like the we're first the domestic. First, yeah, yeah, we're the first okay. domestic onion that we harvest every year. And then by, then, then it's Georgia, and then really New Mexico. Or Calif actually, California starts uh, first of May. So, yes. Yeah. Any other questions for you guys? Besides, like, I mean, I can spout on about the about onions. Anything you need? If you have any questions, I don't. A lot of a, a lot of you have been here before and heard heard the story. And I know you, a lot of you are here for the culinary. But we appreciate you coming and supporting Onion Fest. And it seems the last couple of years it's been it's grown and uh, more people, which is good. You know. I'm, and we're happy to donate some onions like we do, and you guys get to have uh, some of those, those, those onion guys. Thank you. Yeah. And I think everybody's coming in. Are these guys, are these yeah. guys taking, what time is it? Because they're supposed to start at 11. Is it all time? we got five minutes. we got five minutes. I get to talk for five more minutes. Um, <laughs> So we have plastic bins that we, we bring in and haul in from the field and we dry the onions in plastic bins. And then you just handle the bin. We dump, we do, we dump our bins and, and process them. Turn them into sacks, cartons. Sartons, cartons. You know, cartons right now, sacks. And then, yeah, it's it's getting there. We still have we still have 40 some people at the facility, but we used to have 80. And so mechanization has been happening for the last three or four years for us. Because uh, during COVID, no one wanted to work. And after COVID, the last one, you had all the free money. Yeah. Nobody wanted to work. Right. Yeah. And it was very, very nerve-wracking because we had all these onions to harvest and, and run. And, and no one wanted, you know, they, they'd work if you pay them cash. That was, you know, I, I could, well, they were getting free stuff. Why would they come to work? And it was very difficult for the year of COVID and the year after. That's all that free money was about. So we decided to 
do what we could to mechanize, and that's kind of what we had to do because we, you know we barely got through those two seasons, um, and not real timely either. We were probably a week or so behind because of that. So we did mechanize, and so we were able to cut off about 20 or 30 people um, by just using machines and weighing and, and doing stuff. And, we sew our bags now. We used to tie them by hand and put them down, and people would stack them. Now we sew them. After they're filled up, if it's a bag, they sew them, and it goes, and it, we have a machine that stacks it out on pallet. And it's, it's, that's commonplace all over. And we were kind of the last area that was really more, because of the labor we had here, we never thought about it. You know, it's, it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't a problem. We could just solve our problem by adding more labor. And that's the way my dad did it and the way everybody kind of did it here for, for the last 30, 40 years. You know, you needed to, you just threw, threw labor and, 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 and that onto your, your equation and now it's different. We have, we're mechanized and it's better. It's, you know, it's, it's I don't have, we have breakdowns, but it's, it's, it's a little, it's, it's a lot more, it's easier to sleep at night when I know that, because like I said, I don't know if, I don't, yeah, what if someone doesn't come to work? And on Saturdays after lunch, um, you, again, we, first of all, we don't pay till Saturday. Because if you pay it on Friday, no one will show up on Saturday morning to work. So we, everybody gets their check right before we, we go an hour early. Every 11 o'clock, everybody gets their check and goes and cashes it, and half of them come back. That's just the way wow. that, now with the less people, it's better. Most yeah. of the people, and everybody that's at our shed, I think, has been with us for a long time. Most of them, at least a couple years or I have people that have been there for 30 years um, and have been with us in the company. My secretary for one, one of the guys out in sh in, that runs my machinery, he's been with my dad and me for thir almost 35 five years. years. And, uh, you know, so we take we try to take care of them, and, and but they want to work. And so we've, we've, but yeah, the labor is incredibly. But yeah, in the, in the north, they still store. They're store they store their onions bulk. But that onion's hard as a rock. I mean, you could bounce that onion and, and it bounce off. You could throw it down and bounce off the floor. Our onion, you know, it's a lot softer. It won't do that. It's a lot sweeter, though. And that's why, you know, it's a 10-15. But you have to treat it a little different. It's not as... It's a lot... It has a lot more sugar and a lot more water in it than it does, than a northern onion does. From, say, Washington, not, you know, Idaho, or New York State, uh, Canada. Those onions are rock hard. And sometimes smaller, but they're they're rock hard, and that's. And is the 1015 identical to the Vidalia? Identical to something out in California? They, no, well, some of them, some of them are the same varieties, yes, because if they work here and they work there, you know, oh, here it's a 1015, and Vidalia, they're Vidalias. You know, we started the, the, the flat onions here at one time, and that's how the 1015 came about. They couldn't make the, the tonnage with the uh, flat onions, the y, they were Y33s, you can only make so many bags an acre. So Dr. Pike took that onion and made it round. He made, a, he made the first hybrid 1015, and he took that type of onion for its sweetness and then a round onion, and made he made a, a sweet round onion that could make yield. And so it is unique different from the it, it It is now, that, that's correct. But we still, I still grow flat onions here. There's some customers that want to flat. Vidalia's, prunes, right now, everything you see is kind of, they want a flat onion. And, and um, you know, it, it, it is so sort of calling. No, they're actually they, kind they of flat. They look flat. They're flat. Right. They're, like a, they're like a grand, they're called Grand X. And they're kind of a flat onion. And, and huh. we do grow some because there's some customers that want them. But I don't grow that many of them because most of them want, you know, the round 1015. But there's some that want a flat. Huh. So, we, you know, you give the customer what he wants. That's kind of the way you stay in business. And uh, make sure that the consumer's happy. That's number one, too. I might, uh, you know, if you we if you deliver a blow to your retailer, a very good product, you're going to get another order. If you don't, you probably won't. So, you know, we, we do real hard on the on the quality. And it's also you guys, too, that, you know, you guys, when you pick it up from the store, you know, you, you guys are happy with it. So overall, you guys that are at the store picking it up and buying it and saying, yeah, I like that. I like that, you know, that big river or whatever, that's our label, right? I like that one. And, you know, that's, you know, not that you would ever, you might not see it again at the same store, but still, um, I've had a lot of people, and a lot of you guys come every year to my shed to buy onions before you go home. 
you guys are more than welcome if you do, because a lot of them, we've already had people that have been leaving the last week. Um, heading back. Huh? Where is that? Right across the street. Right behind City Hall. Yeah, the processing plant. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we, like I said, a lot of people have been leaving. They've been coming over and buying a box of onions and taking them home. They're out every year. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. How is the crop this year? Excellent. For us, excellent. And I think everywhere else, it's we've had a good wet. We had good weather at planting, um, and pretty good weather going through the season. Uh, last couple months, there's been some challenges with, with disease, especially in, in both areas, and we've had to be spraying um, to keep keep the disease out, uh, to keep the onions going. And but they look really good. Yeah, thank God. And the weather, we like I said on last Friday, we caught inch and a half, two inches of rain north of us here, uh, about 25 miles north, and it was a blessing. And of course, we can't harvest, but we, can, we, we but the rest of the onions, like I said, needed it. So we can't we can't harvest right now. We've been out. Hopefully, we'll be harvesting Monday. Yes, sir. I, maybe I missed it. Time the harvest time. What is the amount of time involved? You would say six months, five between five and six months. Yeah, depending on the variety. I mean, some varieties are six months, some are five and a half, some are, you know. Yes. Yeah. We, no, we will replant in September, October, and the end of September, beginning of October is when we plant. Yes, ma'am. So as a winter Texan, they tell us buy at ten fifteen or no, buy the next thing to sweep. What's the best time for us to take home that last? Probably the 10, probably whatever, like I said, the 1015 is what we're growing here and it's, it's, uh, they're really very similar varieties. Some are, some, but you know, you have Texas grown and you have Mexican grown. And right now, this is the weirdest year. The onion market is very, very high right now. As you've probably seen in the stores, if you go to HEB, the, the onion markets, it's a worldwide thing, kind of. There's, there's a big shortage. And in Mexico, they've been very short in Mexico. So right now, there's not that much coming from Mexico, very little, and uh, Mexico has been buy, been consuming. They must have, I think, some of the hurricanes that got hit them this last summer affected them because they've been buying out of the United States since probably November, November, December, January, and they finally what's being processed down south of us about 200 miles. They're they're keeping most of it. A, a big push, big portion is staying down there. So, um, but the, both the, both are good. I wouldn't say. I mean, wherever you wherever you feel, they're all expensive. It, it doesn't matter right now. Everything's expensive, and everyone's like, "Really?" I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But it's uh, we, we're selling our forty pounders and uh, our boxes over there because that's how we process them right now. We do mostly boxes for retail, and you know we do forty pound stickers, and uh, I think our quality is. Top, very very nice. So, you guys need some? Come on by. Yes, ma'am. Thirty dollars. And can, can you imagine? Last year was probably close to half that, or a little more. Okay, about half that. And that's you know year to year. And it's probably going to be interesting if it doesn't rain. I don't know what it will be next year. It'll be real interesting because if we can't plant here. You know, if there's no water, no one's planting. Are your sacks labeled, what was it, four-fifth bushel or something similar no, to that? No, 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 I, I put in 50, 50 pounds. pounds. That four-fifth bushel so that if you're underweight, you can't get in trouble. But that was a, yeah, that <laughs> was a. 50 pounds, when my dad started, that four-fifth bushel was, is if you're under 50 pounds, you're okay. And, the, you know, it, we put 50 pound weight on the back, so we have to be, for sure, we have to have 50 pounds. Is or it? you're out of you're misbranded. It's it's a pain because we when we ship to Canada, you have to have 50 pounds. So we had to have a thousand uh, little uh, labels, 50 pounds, and it's a pain. Yeah, we everything's now with 50 pounds. No no one does it. But yeah, when I started, four fist bushel was a way to get yourself if you didn't put 50 pounds accidentally in there because if if you if you, they caught you. And they showed you, and you didn't believe them. If you brought the government in, you'd get a fine because you put you were you were misbranded. So that's how they came up with four fist bushel. 
You didn't know that either. I mean. Oh, with the. That's my dad. That, I mean, I've been on a long time with my dad. I remember that. That was kind of the the way to get around it. If you so you couldn't get a fine. Oh, see, with the cello carrots, you still it says one pound, but sometimes it'll be slightly underneath a pound. And I, I still weigh the bags there on the scale. We, on every th and every all our, we do all the three pounders you see in the stores and all that. We we check weigh every bag. So as our bags are coming off our processing line on three pounders, they go to a girl and she puts them on a the scale and they either reject it or pass. And you know that's kind of an important thing you know to, to do. So you don't. That's one thing we do with our three pounders. And on our fifty pound bags, everything like I said is now mechanized. So we have a machine that that's weighing it and puts exactly fifty one pounds in the bag. Could be if you put fifty one, it could be fifty one, or it could be fifty one and a quarter, fifty one point three. But it will put as close as it can. And before we used to fill up, you would fill up a bag and say, okay, right here is where it is. You'd fill it up, and you do you check weigh one out of every ten bags to make sure you were doing okay. That's the way they did it for many years when I started. And then mechanism, like you said, we started using scales and, and, and weighing mechanically and kind of took that out of there. But it was kind of funny to sit there. And it was like they, they, they get it right to a certain point in the bag. This is where you got to be. And they fill it up. And then they have this thing and turn it around and start filling up the net bag. And they take it off and tie it. And that's why we used to have 80 people. We used to have 80 people in our facility during, during the season. And now it's a little bit half. Yes, sir. That's from no, they're that's from I saw them. They're from Mexico, and they, they don't they don't look at the bag, but the bag there says produce of Mexico. So I was kind of looking at that. There's no Texas right now. The Texas onions are short because it rains. So I was like kind of like where to get those big ones, but they're Mexican up. Probably close. They're just big. They're colossal. So you want the biggest onion you can get, which is like four and a quarter, four to inches and up to do a blooming onion and that's kind of what Outback does they want a four and a quarter inch onion and above um, so it's kind of hard sometimes you know when when right now for for us in Texas I don't try to grow anything that big I try to go three and a half to four inches and that's kind of what I want to if I can get I'm gonna get always get some smaller ones and always get some bigger ones but that's the kind of size I'm looking for I don't I don't want to have field of four and a quarter inch onions but sometimes you can't sell them do they still produce a super class oh sure that's yeah. one and a quarter that they put, trying to put that in a pallet that was such a pain how about putting it in a bag <laughs> <laughs> in the bag but the yeah it's onions that big you know you, you it can only go in with me mechanically i can't do it i can't put it in a bag i, I they promise you know these people that sell you machinery oh yeah it didn't work you can see it oh yeah they get stuck and all of a sudden you're trying to run all these cold super colossals in the bag and it won't work. So now all of a sudden the only way I can do it is I put it in a 50 pound box. I can't pack it any other way so that's why, another reason why I don't want to grow super colossals because it's, it's hard for me to, to process it now but we put them in a box. So I get these big huge monsters and we stick them in a box for a food service for Outback or whoever is looking for them if we have them. But uh, yeah we can't, we can't get them in a bag. I can't physically get them in a bag anymore with my machinery. And then before it was the same way. You were trying to basically maybe put it in my can there to sell big because they'll get two of them get together trying to go in the mouth of the bag and they get stuck. And, and that's what happened. Anything else guys? Man I got every full we're full now. You guys are waiting for the <laughs> culinary. I need to find out if they want those onions. If not you guys can have them. Wash them on <laughs> Um, no, we, we enjoy what we do. Produce is very different. It's very fast. It's a lot of uh, stress in the time that you... For me, it's I have to plan it and stress myself out to here, but right now is a stressful part, trying to get it out of the ground and then getting it to shed the process so we can recoup all our investment that we had over the last six months. And so it's, it's, it's our stressful part of the year. Yes, ma'am. We, 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 so we have a tractor that goes and, and cuts the roots and it lifts it out of the ground a little bit and then people come in and harvest it. So we bring in people and we harvest it. Huh? It's, 
And yeah, well, you know, yeah. And click, you know, you get two of them and they're really, man, they'll grab a bunch of onions and they'll go click, 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 click off all the roots. And then they put it over a bucket and they go, ta, 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 and they pop them in a bucket. And they're, they're, the guys, they really can, they can, they're real quick at it. Um, but yeah, we lift them. Cause if not, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you can't ask someone to pull it out of the ground. It's, it's, so that's the hard part is, and right now, I've been looking every day, trying to just since, since Saturday morning, going out to the farm again. When can I can't get in? And so all week I've been waiting for it, and then it rained on Tuesday again, right? And so <laughs> we're, uh, but we'll start we'll start the knife, and we'll start lifting the onions tomorrow, and we'll start clipping them on Monday, hopefully. And we'll start off again. We got a lot of a lot of acres to go through in the next till the end of April, first of May. Fifty. If a good one would be anywhere between forty and fifty thousand pounds an acre. That that would be a great yield for us. Huh? What do you average? It just depends. This year's going to be pretty good. I would say we will average close to that. You know, but our first ones when we planted in September it was so hot. We ended up making about 25, 30, right? And so it was just half the yield, but they couldn't, they didn't, they didn't like that 100 degree heat in September that we had when we tried to plant. And that's, that's the struggle we do too. You want to come and be, you know, get early Texas 10, 15s because everybody wants them. But the earlier you plant, the hotter it is, the less the onions want to come up. And you get that first northern and it cools things down, then everything comes out of the ground. Like no problems, but you struggle the first, couple weeks of September, our first eight later, latter weeks of September to get onions up. It's just mother nature. Yes, ma'am. Aside of uh, Mexico, is Texas the largest producers? Or is California or Florida? I would think that we're the, well, I think Georgia's probably more than us in fresh, uh, in, in short day onions. Obviously in Washington, Idaho, and these, these uh, long day onions, they, they have, they're, they're probably harvesting they're probably doing 20, 30,000 acres per area. So, you know, they, they, they bring in onions in August, September, and they go, right, they're still hard, they're still shipping right now, they storm for that long. And here we do, I think the Valley's at 7,500 acres of onions this year. But you, do, you grow the sweet onions. Correct. Down here. Everything's on, yes, ma'am. That's, that's what we, that's kind of, that's what we've been doing for years. And it, you know, we have a following with retail and, and customers that want Texas 1015s and you know it's always it's the first domestic sweet onion of the year and then come the 15th of April when Vidalia starts they'll leave us <laughs> that's just the way it goes it's the next area and everybody wants Vidalias after that so you know depending in Texas we all want 1015s but around the country there's still a lot of people that want the Vidalia onion and that's a flat onion you know so yeah, that's the way it is in anything. They, they leave you for the next area, so that's... <laughs> um, but, yeah, but then, you know, at that point, a lot of the stuff we do is food service and, and, and Texas retail and food service here and uh, around the country. But there's going to be an onion shortage this year, guys. I don't, th I don't see the prices in the stores going down until, if we're lucky, July. And you're going to be in the, you're going to be, you know, in the mid one, one to two dollar range per pound. Because um, I just, there's, the onions in the Northwest are going bad. There's only so many onions here. Mexico's taking over half the crop that usually comes up to this side of the border for us. And over half the, half the, half the acres there has already been uh, probably consumed in Mexico. That's how short they were with those two hurricanes. I guess that hurricane that went throughout the pool kind of messed up some of the growing areas because all of a sudden they've been buying, like I said, up in, up in Washington and Idaho. From November on, they bought so many. They took the white onion mark. Uh, white onion mark got the. Those things were worth seventy dollars here. A bag. That's how short it got on white onions here. A couple weeks, probably about a month ago. And it's still in the forty, fifty dollar range. But it was, you know, for, for something to be seventy dollars a bag, it was very, very. And it's still, you know. Yeah. No. I'm to throw my own <laughs> no. And, no. And when when my guys like were coming from from. Uh, from Mexico, they were insuring the loads. When I had, when we started oh, out over in, in, in 300 miles down, the truck couldn't leave the shed until they had insurance on the load. You know, it's a lot of money. So it's kind of like avocados. They do insurance on avocados. Well, they started doing it on white onions here this year. 
and a smart move because you know anybody, they, you know everybody knows. You know, it's not like and, and the bad guys on that side of the border knew too. And so you know, for them to steal a load is not unheard of or not something that could happen. So you know, that's they, that's that was a thing that had a, a yes sir. You can they can a truck can haul eighty thousand pounds, truck and trailer. 80,000 pounds truck and trailer. So, you know, it's about 43 to 44,000 pounds on a truck, yeah. a product. So we do about, say they're 2,000 pounds, 40 times 50. We're, we're at 48, 40, so about, two, that we're about 22 pallets on a truck. Coming from Mexico? I don't know. They, you know, their insurance companies. I'm sure they're paying eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, or a thousand dollars a truck. But it's not much when your when your car goes about seventy thousand, sixty, seventy thousand dollars. So, you know, they started. They insure it. But I'm, I don't know. I don't know that answer. Um, but that was the first time ever that I seen them insure onions coming coming here <laughs> ever. So that's kind of a neat thing. But yeah, the, the yells are in the thirties, and the reds are for twenty five pound bags. Or, Twenty-five dollars, so they're fifty dollars a fifty-pound batter, and uh, it's going to be an interesting onion market for the next couple months, just because I think they had Mexico buying, and the Northwest onions are not holding up as good. They have a lot of internal problems. I don't know, you know, those old onions, and you're cutting, they're cutting bad inside. So um, it looks like it's going to be short here on uh, for the next couple months. Which you know, for it's been, it's been interesting. I don't I don't remember, and it's since I started in '94 that Texas onions had a good onion market. Normally, the market get real good, and Mexico will have it, and then all of a sudden, by the time we start here in April, first of April into March, it crashes. Right, all of a sudden it was 20 bucks, and then it crashes to 80. And last year, I, you know, we sold onions, uh, Mexican onions, for as low as eight to ten dollars at some points last year that were coming in. So and now you know it's it's uh, it's a little bit it's a lot different this year. You guys, hey, you guys, get us. So after this, so we're going to do a demonstration, a cooking demonstration. Uh, the culinary program from South Texas is down the road. Uh, our culinary program will be uh, demonstrating some recipes <laughs> that y'all can cook with onions, like the ones that uh, the, are being presented here. And it's a, a variety of dishes that we actually have to prepare. So uh, we'll be doing that immediately after the presentation. Well, any other questions, guys? <laughs> I, I know you guys want to see the culinary, so I'll get out of here and let them start. <laughs> You're welcome, guys. We appreciate you coming out and us. I got to tell you for something. These folks do an amazing job year in and year out. In fact, those onions that, that we all are enjoying. You know, they came from his place, so, you know, I, we're a, very, very proud of the fact that, you know, he supports our activity every year, he does his great presentation, and he tells us everything that we want to know about onions, but we're afraid to ask, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you so much for, for your time and for the presentation. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.